Look, I can't explain to you about my Bigfoot encounter without explaining to you the circumstances that surround it. My mom's sister, Auntie Zoe, beautiful woman. I mean, Tony Braxton, beautiful. But the problem with my auntie was, no matter what she did, she just couldn't keep a man. I remember my mom and dad talking over here and my dad ranting and raving. The reason why your pretty sister can't keep a man is because she makes too much money and she emasculates every man around. Knows too much. Everything's got to be her way. She'll never, ever keep a man behaving that way. Understand, Auntie Zoe was just 40 years old, two divorces, multiple boyfriends. She really couldn't keep a relationship. Long story short, I'm 16 years old. Aunt Zoe's a pharmacist. She literally works herself so much that she goes crazy. The poor woman is so bad off, she spends two and a half years inside the loony bin. Once finally out, Aunt Zoe packs up all her stuff, moves up to North Louisiana, right on the border of Arkansas. She told my mom that she couldn't stand being around people and she'd rather be alone in the woods. Now, time passes. I don't end up going to college immediately. I start working with my dad in his construction business. So it's a Friday evening. I'm on top of a roof doing an inspection when my dad calls me. Son, I need you to hurry home. Your mom is freaking out. She wants us to drive up and check on your Aunt Zoe. Keep in mind, I hadn't heard anything about Aunt Zoe for months. I had no idea what was going on with her. All I knew was that this lady had went crazy, and now all of a sudden, my father and I are driving three hours to go check on her. By the time we get to her property, it's dark outside. Pull up to her gate, hit a buzzer, and we realize that Aunt Zoe has bought a property so big that riding down the road to get to her house is like taking a journey through the freaking haunted woods. When I tell you it was scary outside, moss hanging from the trees, no lights, shadows dancing at the corner of the headlights. This was freaking crazy. We pull up to the house expecting Zoe to be outside to greet us. Nope. Every light inside the house is turned off. Now, so picture this. My dad and I, two grown men, two tough guys, sitting in the vehicle debating are we really going to get out of this car and go check on this crazy woman. My gut instinct told me this was going to be a bad idea, but my dad insisted that we didn't go check on my auntie. My mother would never forget us. So out the car we go, around the front of the house to the front door, ringing the doorbell, no reply. Around the side of the house to the back door, beating on the door, no reply. Now my father and I have the two emergency flashlights from the glove compartment, peeping through the windows of the house, trying to see what the hell is going on. That was the first time we both heard it. This loud noise. It literally sounded like something was screaming and growling at us at the same time. Long, loud, nasty. And based on the volume of the sound, Whatever this was, was pretty close by to us. And now we're panicking, starting to make bad decisions. We could have went around the front side of the house and got right back to the vehicle, but instead we circle around the back side of the house, which in all actuality was bringing us closer to that sound. Halfway around the back side of the house, my auntie Zoe pops up out of nowhere, opening these two cellar doors, demanding that we come inside. My father tough guy building contractor i've seen him fight men twice his size and whoop their behinds we're in the cellar and his hands are shaking he looks at my auntie and says zoe what the hell was that initially her reply seemed kind of silly but the more i thought about it it might have been something to it david that's one of those bigfoots she rambles on you see when i got this property i got it dirt cheap so cheap that I should have known something was wrong. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is my Aunt Zoe. She was in the loony bin. Now, granted, I heard the noise outside. It sounded like nothing I've ever heard before in my life. But when I weighed it out in my mind, there was a noise outside I'd never heard before. 
but I'm locked in a cellar with a woman who literally went crazy and has been in a loony bin. She goes on to tell my dad at night she comes down into the cellar, bolts herself inside behind the metal doors, and hides from the Bigfoots. Now, as she explains this, I'm standing there watching my father's whole demeanor change. His hands stop shaking, and they move to his hips. He starts tapping his right foot on the ground impatiently. And based on his body language, I'm starting to realize that he's feeling the exact same way I feel, that this woman has gone crazy. More ramblings from her. The first time I saw one of them, I was stepping out of the shower naked, and one was staring at me through the window. But it's only gotten worse since then. Now they beat on the house, jiggle the doorknobs, and try to get in. And I have to give my dad credit for what he did next. Because gently he just posed one question to my auntie. If these creatures are on your property as you proclaim, why haven't you just gotten in your car and driven away? Zoe's eyes darted up, down, left, right, in all kinds of directions. You could see that she was carefully thinking about the words that were going to come out of her mouth next. Because they destroyed my Jeep, I cannot leave. Now, although it was dark out there, now keep in mind, when we pulled up in that driveway, we parked our vehicle right behind her Jeep. And based on what I saw, and I didn't see the entire car at that time, but based on what I saw, it looked as if nothing was wrong with that vehicle. Now, Dad is talking to her calmly again. Zoe, now I know it's pretty tough on you to be alone. The last time you end up spending this amount of time alone, you had to go see people to talk about it. I think we're going to need to get you some help, Zoe. We're going to get you some help and get you someone to talk to. Right there when my father said that is when things went from kind of crazy to cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs crazy. Zoe turns around, opens this cabinet door, and pulls out a shotgun. Now that my father and I are locked in this basement, cellar, whatever the hell you want to call it, with my crazy auntie who has a shotgun. She looks at us and says, I'm not going out there at night, and neither are you. It's not safe. I'll give her credit. Although Zoe had this shotgun in her hand, it was pointed at the ground. She wasn't being 100% threatening with it, but I didn't feel comfortable with this crazy woman having a shotgun. So I started inching closer to her, my intentions to take it away from her. My father notices that I'm moving closer, and so he starts to distract her by waving his arms kind of wildly and being dramatic as he speaks, saying, I really find it hard to believe, Zoe, that there's something outside in those woods so threatening that you need to hide in the cellar. It just doesn't make any sense. Why don't you have any lights on? Why do you just didn't walk off the property? What's going on with you, Zoe? Imagine the scene. I'm closing in on her. My dad is distracting her. When we hear what sounds like a freaking dinosaur, step on those metal cellar doors. Kaboom! Kaboom! Silence. Zoe whispers, see, I told you, you can't go out there at night. Listen to me, for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I felt like I was in a freaking Godzilla movie. Screams, growls, beating on the metal doors, beating on the side of the house that you can hear from upstairs. It was totally terrifying. I damn near pissed my pants. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dog Waters, coming back to you with another great story on Zoe and the Bigfoots. This one here is members only. If you're not a member, head on over and subscribe and join up and become a member. The price is $4.99 a month. If you are a member, if you are a member, just enjoy the content because there's a lot more coming down the pipeline. Uh, we're digging into some of the things that I... I'm starting to dig into some of the things that I said I wouldn't technically crossing lines that i probably shouldn't but at this point in time really who cares um i've tried to reveal as much truth as i can without being a problem but even when you do it the right way there's still people who seem to have issues so if we're gonna have issues then we just gonna have freaking issues man and that's what it's gonna be i i've told people over and over and over again i'm not the guy that you try to intimidate i'm the guy that you talk to and so intimidation just doesn't work on me and i guess we just have to let the cats out the freaking bags and that's all it is to it baby so keep tuning in when it comes to those particular stories i'm gonna make sure that those stories everybody can hear that's if you want to hear them if you care to hear them uh, the way i see it is over time people will come to understand exactly 
the significance of what's being revealed to them uh, most people don't see things in the moment that is going down it takes them two three four years to figure out what the hell's going on because in the moment they're consumed with foolishness and lies and that's what's going on with a lot of people but anyway head back over to imdogwaters.com sign up become a member for those of you who are members i appreciate you i love you and god bless you